and welcome, I'm your code monkey, and here let's check out the top new games made in Unity and launched in July 25. It was quite an impressive month this time, several games out of early access after literally years, and also several really small games, like 2-5 to five hour experiences, that found quite a lot of success, and one game with a very silly concept that sold over half a million copies. The reason why I make these videos is to show you everything the engine can do, the only limit is really just your own skills and imagination, and the variety and the awesomeness of the game shown here really puts that to the test. All of these games are uniquely impressive, so the list is in no particular order, except for the number one game that is my personal pick of the month. And right now, the best of summer sale is currently ongoing. You can find the top assets, some of them at 50% off. So there's a ton of really awesome stuff here. These are really the top assets. I just recently made a video where I covered my five must-have assets. How to Reload helps you speed up the compilation, which helps you really iterate much faster. Fiel is always an excellent tool for helping you polish your games. Text Animator is another one of my favorites, super useful for literally any game that has text, which is pretty much every game. The asset inventory is great if you have lots of assets you need to manage. Then you've got the all one 3D shader and the all one sprite shader. Both these are excellent for adding all kinds of effects. You've got Bakery in case you want to bake some lights. There's Easy Save if you want to save all kinds of data. Of course, you've got Odin. It's a great tool for making tools. Due to in Pro, this is a great, simple, and pretty cheap, nice tweeting library. You've got this tool for making some really cool mesh effects. There's Umotion if you want to edit humanoid animations directly inside Unity. And of course, I'm biased, but I would recommend my own Code Monkey Toolkit. Like I said, I'm biased, but the only reason why I made this is because these tools have already been generally useful to me in all of my Steam games. So if there's lots of awesome stuff, all on sale, all at 50% off, lots of tools, asset visuals, really all kinds of things, since these are the top assets, pretty much all of these are excellent. I believe the sale is only running for two more weeks, so check it out with the link in the description. Alright, so starting off at number 10, if you're into word games, here is Wordplay. Now you might actually know this one. It's the latest game from Mark Brown from the excellent channel Game Maker Toolkit. It's a word roguelike, that's definitely unique. You spell some words, pick from all kinds of unique perks, and basically just survive until the end. So you start from a bunch of letters and try to build the biggest, most complex word you can. After each round, you can pick from over 150 unique perks. These do all kinds of things like adding more town spaces so you can get more score or maybe some of them add some bonus points. Then you've got various upgrades and special tiles. It even has multiple difficulty modes if you're kind of like me and kind of bad at word games. The game seems to have very much the same sort of bilateral style of going for higher and higher scores. Really just one more upgrade, one more round and get mountains of points. This one is definitely a very unique, interesting game. It's a word roguelike. It sounds like it would be niche, but it's already doing quite well. It's got 500 reviews at 91% positive. So this weird combo does seem to work quite well. Then here we have one of the biggest hits of recent times. It's called Mage Arena. This one is a PvP game where you use your voice in order to cast spells. So that's the hook. It's all very silly. You just hear all kinds of people shouting all kinds of spells all the time. You basically pick up your spell book, go into the world, and just start, for example, shouting Fireball. That's really the core of the game. The world is pretty varied with some fantastical landscapes for you to explore. You can fight in either 4v4 battles or 1v1. So yep, in terms of mechanics, the game is very simple. It's basically just that. Walk around, read spells aloud in order to defeat your enemies. But despite being simple, it is extremely fun. The one question with these games is always, can it detect weird accents, kind of like mine, or does it only work on basically the generic American voices? Based on the reviews, it seems they do have some features to help with that. I definitely need to try it out myself to see if my weird accent works with the game. It is out now in early access, and like I said, it's one of the biggest hits of recent times. In just one week, it already has over 7,000 reviews at 94% positive, meaning it has likely already sold over 600,000 copies, likely already made between one to three million dollars in just two weeks. So yep, that's a huge hit. Definitely a very weird game, but players do seem to love it. Next up, here we have a game that just left early access after 1.5 years. It's called Back to the Dawn. I think I remember seeing this game and including it in one of these top new releases videos when it originally came out. It looked great back then and it looks great now. The game has some really gorgeous art. I love how this looks. Some nice pixel art, really solid with tons of effects and a 3D camera, 3D world. The game itself is a story-rich RPG set in a high security prison. You you investigate all kinds of conspiracies from the inside, you gather some evidence, and basically outsmart a system that was designed to silence you, interact with other friends or foes, do all kinds of prison tasks, and sneak around through hidden spots. You can also uncover the truth and break free. As you do work on the prison, you enhance your stats, so will you be a sneaky thief or a smooth talker that manipulates people? There are plenty of options you can do, there's over 100 handcrafted quests with multiple possible escape routes, so it's really up to you to define your own custom escape plan. There's also several endings and over 500,000 
words of awesome narrative. It's interesting how this is a story focused game. Usually those don't do very well in early access, but this one did great. It's got over 3000 very positive reviews. So if you were waiting for 1.0 to play this one, then now is the time. Next for some fun vehicle combat, here we have Fumes. It's a very customizable car game with lots of fun physics and a nice PS1 style visuals. I love how everything in the game is so bouncy with physics. You choose a car from dozens of different bases, then upgrade it with all sorts of weapons and gadgets. It really has quite a lot of customization. Then you get behind the wheel and go out on this world to roam around, to fight off waves of enemies, and basically just see them all blow up in front of you. You can do all that, or simply deliver some suspicious packages whilst escaping from raiders. Maybe you can also simply just win some straightforward races, or you can fight off some giant bosses. These are some really huge monstrosities on wheels. The more bosses you beat, the more cars you unlock. There's really no loading screens and no fast travel, you just use your car. The game perfectly captures that PS1 car games vibe. It looks the part and plays the part. Nice low poly visuals, nice bouncy physics and feel. This one is out now in early access and people love it. It already has over 500 overwhelmingly positive reviews at 97% positive. That's a near perfect score. So if you're into this genre, then definitely give it a look. Then we have a really fun one called Fill Up The Hole. The goal is exactly what it says. Basically, there's a hole in the world and it's up to you to fill it. Anything you throw in the hole, you get some money for. This one is a short incremental game. You basically get some trash that gets generated by your city and then it's up to you to throw that trash in the hole to make money. So first you do that manually. So by yourself, you manually pick it up with your hands and throw it in the hole. But then of course, you can make all kinds of machines to automate that process. You can get some giant vehicles to basically push it into the hole or get some trebuchets to basically throw a ton of garbage very far. You can unlock more upgrades to generate more garbage and more ways to throw it in the hole in order to make more money. So it's a very silly concept and a pretty short game. It's only two hours long, but players are already loving it. It is only three bucks and it only has over 400 very positive views. So if you want some silly mindless fun, then this one is for you. Up next, we have one that is very much a personal pick. It's called Phantom Squad. If you know my game dev journey, then you know that I love top-down line of sight mechanics. And this game has exactly that. Alongside with excellent polish, everything looks super satisfying. The shooting breaks all the windows. There's debris flying all over the place. In motion, the game looks really gorgeous. And it's really not just a top-down shooter, but rather a co-op top-down tactical shooter. So you play a SWAT, which is another thing that I love, then define the plan with your teammates and then execute that plan. Being online co-op means you can define the plan straight with your friends. So you can draw on the map itself in order to communicate what the plan is meant to be. You can use all kinds of tools and gadgets to help you. So you can see under doors to see where the enemies are. You can use flashbangs in order to disorient them and use some nice breaching tools and traps. Then once everyone knows the plan, you start the breach and each one of you takes down all the bad guys. Every bullet really counts. The weapons are deadly. There are no second chances. The goal is to beat the bad guys across multiple maps from downtown buildings to some complex jungle compounds. The game is out now with 200 views at 77% positive. Then for some super fast paced action, here we have Hell Clock. This one is a combination of roguelike and ARPG, meaning you've got non-stop replayability alongside tons and tons of loot in some dangerous dungeons. Every second counts, so you have to be fast. Will you risk going deeper in order to get some better loot? But at the cost of also facing some more nightmarish creatures, you can forge all kinds of ancient relics to create unstoppable builds, unleash various unique powers to take down all of your foes, and then discover unique combinations of blessings to help you more on your next run. This one features a giant and difficult three-act campaign. You can only reach the end by playing very well and making the perfect build. Visually, the game looks really excellent. It's a nice Diablo-like with roguelike elements. People are enjoying this one quite a lot. In just two weeks, it already has 1,500 very positive views. Next, if you're into biking games, which are actually pretty rare, here's a great new one titled Wheel World. You play as a ride chosen by ancient rider spirits. Use your bike in this very unique world, race some elite themes, go downhill super fast, or do some trick jumps. The world is very varied with lots of biomes. You can race in the city or race in dirt. If you lose, then just go upgrade your bike with all kinds of unique attachments and try again. In the meantime, just to explore this awesome huge world, you can roam around looking for interesting things to do, view some gorgeous vistas, find some hidden legendary parts and a bunch more. The bike customization system is really pretty detailed. Then go out and really just fulfill your destiny to save the world. All in all, it's a very nice, chill, but also pretty intense game. In just one week, it already has 300 very positive views. So yep, people are also loving this one. Next is another one that also just left early access after almost three years. It's called The Wandering Village. This is a very unique city builder where you build your city, but you do so on the back of a giant moving creature. The creature moves through the world, walking through different biomes, and you need to build your city in such a way that you can survive. 
so you need to plan some production chains and optimize them to use the smallest amount of space possible. And you're in a symbiotic relationship with the creature, so you need to take care of one another. The world is very unforgiving and full of poisonous plants. You can research a giant tech tree, build some complex buildings, and take care of the creature. So walk around and burn off dangerous spores and kill off parasites in order to keep the creature healthy. Or technically, you can also be selfish and just do everything just for the benefit of your own villagers and not the creature. The choice is very much up to you. Visually, the game is also quite interesting with a nice mix of 2D and 3D. People love this one. In those three years of early access, it has gathered over 6,000 very positive views. So if you're into a new type of city builder, then check this out. And at number one for my personal pick of the month, here we have another fun, interesting combo. It's an incremental bullet hell game titled Astro Prospector. You start off just by yourself mining some simple coffee roids, just moving around the asteroids for a while while your ship mines it. But this, of course, is very inefficient. So soon enough, you start buying upgrades to improve that process. You add some more mining rays, make them more efficient, set up some automated mining turrets, increase the ship speed, durability, and a bunch more. But the enemy machines, they don't like you and they will try to stop you. Bullets will start flying everywhere and you need to dodge them to keep on mining. The loop is basically you mine, you get some loot, upgrade your ship, Mine some more and keep doing that over and over again. There's 25 unique zones and over 200 upgrades. The game looks extremely well polished. All the buttons, all the menus, actions, all of those look super satisfying. I would guess that's the reason why it's finding so much success. So this game, this is likely a great one just to study, just to see what they do so well. The game is pretty cheap at just five bucks and it says in the store page very clearly how it's an intense but a short five hour experience and players do seem to love that. They don't mind that it's a relatively short experience. It already has over a thousand overwhelmingly positive Positive reviews, meaning it has likely sold 40,000 copies in just one month. That's a great result. All right, so that's 10 awesome new games made with DNT launch in July 25. I hope this list helped you see how DNT engine is capable of building anything. The only limits are really just your own skills and imagination. Check out my own game, Dinky Guardians, and I hope you enjoy playing it.